Greetings and salutations, guys. Eric here with my review of Moana 2, uh, a movie that on one hand you could say is eight years in the making, given the original opened in 2016. Yet on the other hand, it feels like this is less than a year in the making, at least from our perspective of hearing about this movie and it becoming a movie. But we'll get to that. Moana 2 picks up a few years after the original with our title character, once more voiced by Ali E. Carvalho, having grown a bit frustrated because she has not found any other people as she's gone out searching as a wayfinder, even though she knows that others must be out there somewhere. But things change when she gets a message from beyond from a wayfinder from long ago who once tried but failed to reach a mythical land far off, has a comet appears that seems to be sending her on the path to find, finally, other people out there. And she goes on a new journey following that comet. So yeah, up front we have to talk about the strange behind-the-scenes story of Moana 2, and the reason that a lot of people, myself included, had some wariness about this film, which is we didn't know this movie existed, at least as a movie, until February 2024. That's right, nine months ago. Because previously, they were going to make this into a TV series. This was first announced as a Disney Plus Moana animated series that would be a follow-up to the film. And it was a very late decision that they were going to make this into a movie, much less a movie that was going to open at the end of 2024. Um, I don't know how close close to the announcement that it was becoming a film uh, that they actually made the decision behind the scenes maybe they made it you know a full year ago a year and a half ago even but it still seems from our perspective like in under a year they made this into a movie um, taking you know what was supposed to be a show and would obviously have been paced very differently even if the overall story was the same it would have to have been changed drastically to make it into a feature film and that caused a lot of concern about can this feel like a cohesive movie? Can this feel like a strong movie, given what feels like a major time crunch? I'm happy to say that it does feel like a really strong movie. Uh, this is a really solid sequel. Is it a, an exceptional sequel? Uh, no. Is it better than the first? Is it as good as the first? No, it's not. Uh, but it's still a very fulfilling, entertaining sequel that I think does deliver what fans will want to see. Uh, I think it's a very crowd-pleasing movie, and I did not feel watching it the, um, oh man, they, they just they just put this all together at the last minute. And there's a lot of stories in animation history. Toy Story 2 comes to mind, Ratatouille, of uh, movies that have been drastically reworked behind the scenes and changed a lot in the final year of production. So I kind of see Moana 2 as the same thing. It's just it changed form. It changed what it was going to be and how they were going to deliver it and had to be, you know, uh, morphed into this feature film. And I think they did a commendable job of that with some caveats. Most of the primary creative team behind the first film did not return, though Jared Bush did come back as a writer. While you've got David G. Derrick Jr., Jason Hand, and Dana Ludo, Miller has the co-directors. Miller also co-wrote the movie with Bush. And I think they do a really good job of continuing this story, continuing this world, and making it a world that you still really enjoy spending time with. And I think most importantly, making Moana just such a wonderful main character that was such a standout element in the first film, uh, that she is, you know, so engaging and so heroic. That continues here. You completely are invested in this character and her new journey in this movie. And while, of course, you feel like this is a Moana movie, she has to go out to sea again on a new adventure, I think they do a pretty good job of not making it an exact carbon copy. A big way they do that is by having Maui uh, stay separate for a while. We know what's going on with him, but Moana does not. And meanwhile, she's given this new crew, uh, this group that accompanies her this time on her trip. And I think they're all really fun characters. Uh, you really get to know them and they all have their different quirks and different things that make them funny. One character in particular, Moni, is really enjoyable because he is a Maui fanboy. And when Maui inevitably does join up with Moana and this gang, uh, there's some really good humor derived from the fact that Maui's kind of weirded out by the fact that this guy is so obsessed with him. The movie has a really good energy. It has some good, exciting action set pieces. And there's some really cool visuals throughout. Like in the first movie, water is so crucial to the story and this beautiful sort of CG animated water 
throughout the film it looks great and in this time they intermix a lot of sort of lightning effects some of which get trippy and surreal because some of them aren't happening in the real world they might be a vision or there might be some supernatural you know dangers afoot it looks great these sequences when you know the uh, the lightning is striking and the waves are crashing and you really feel sort of the danger and the tension there but one crucial component behind the scenes this movie is missing is Lin-Manuel Miranda, who did not return this time to co-write the songs. And it's hard not to speculate that maybe he would have if he had had proper time, if they could have cleared his schedule by saying, hey, we're going to make Moana 2, uh, let's give it a couple years and uh, make sure that you're free to do this, instead of saying Moana 2 is coming out in less than a year. And in his place, the songwriters Abigail Barlow and Emily Bear stepped in, and their songs are decent but i do think that you feel the absence of miranda and overall these songs are just not as memorable uh they don't stand out as much as the ones in the first film did but there are a couple exceptions on the positive side that i did really enjoy one of those is beyond which is the big sort of central moana song uh, it is really stirring, it is really powerful, and Cravalho, uh, she just nails it. Her voice has only gotten better and matured as she has matured as a young woman and an actress. Uh, and yeah, that that's a, a great sequence that she just kills. I am a sucker for any time Moana sings, I am Moana in that powerful voice, and she gets to do it and beyond. I think the other great song is one sung by a character named Matangi, voiced by Afimi Frazier. She has a really rousing high tempo number called Get Lost. I don't want to get too into detail on this character because there's a little bit of mysteriousness about her in the film, but I will say that I really like how this song works with her character and sort of the different layers of her character and what she might represent to Moana. There are other times though where unfortunately you really can feel that the songs are not measuring up to the first one. I think a prime example of that is Maui's big number, Can I Get a Chihu? Uh, which is just know you're welcome. Uh, it does not deliver what you're welcome did. Though on the animation side, it kind of makes up for it by the fact that it is really entertaining and inventive sequence that has Maui and Moana kind of in this imaginary workout slash training montage. And it's kind of distracting you from the fact that this song isn't that great and is not making the impact your welcome made. Moana 2 gets a little weirder and wackier than the first in ways that I mostly appreciated, uh, certainly with some of the creatures and some of the things that they encounter out there on the water. There's this giant clam uh, that looks both kind of like funny, but also kind of freaky. It's like H.P. Lovecraft had a hand in designing a Disney animated creature. This movie gets a little more gross and icky in a way that sometimes there's a little overkill. There is a lot of uh, mucus or uh, mucus substitutes or it seems that it seems like people are getting sneezed on or encountering snot-like substances. Maybe just like dial it back guys maybe like just one or two of those scenes it feels like we get a, more like four or five I'm probably exaggerating that in my mind it just happened enough that it felt like it was a recurring theme in Moana 2 for whatever reason but for the most part I do think Moana 2 does deliver and has a huge fan of the first one I did feel happy with this as a sequel it's, it's one of those sequels I, I think I've mentioned this before that Die Hard 2 is one I constantly use as kind of a my my example of this it's a die hard too which is like you know what that hit the notes i wanted it to from a sequel even though of course it can't compare to the first one but you know as far as delivering more of what i liked and escalating what i liked that's still you know that was a good sequel and i think moana 2 is the same moana 2 is the die hard 2 of disney animated movies and you can quote me on that it all leads to a big epic final sequence that I found about 80% satisfying. So kind of like the movie itself, there is some spectacular visuals. There are some very dramatic moments. I was sufficiently emotionally engaged in what was happening with these characters that I really like. I do think that there is something, I have to be vague here. There's one place where it feels like they are holding back from going a little further, having a little more of a consequence the actions that occur. It reminded me of Frozen 2 and how I feel in my heart, I know no one has 
I think, admitted this around Frozen 2, but it feels like there was a version of Frozen 2 where Arendelle was going to be destroyed at the end, right? feels like at one point, because animated movies are constantly being changed, that was what was going to happen, and that was what they were aiming towards. feels similar about Moana 2, where it feels like, oh, I think something else was supposed to happen here in these final moments, and they are kind of sending you down that path, and then they veer away from it. Like, it feels like someone decided, oh, maybe we shouldn't do that. And I feel like it maybe would have had more dramatic heft if they had kept in that thing. But I still felt very stirred by what happened. And the movie does end on a high note, especially if you are a fan of Moana. Again, the character uh, and what she represents and who in this movie, you know, right from the beginning, we see the importance she has to her people more than ever because of the events of the first movie. She walks among them, has this, you know, sort of, very respected and idolized person and she's earned that she earned it in the first movie but she certainly earns it even more in the second one and i really liked how the second film ended as far as the legend of moana both in the movies but also in universe you know what she means to her people what she uh, signifies to them i mentioned how good Cravalho continues to be but i also want to mention Dwayne johnson because look um He has gotten a lot of flack, including sometimes for myself, for doing too many similar projects and kind of being, uh, it feels like, constrained and not going outside the box, even though we've seen him go outside the box sometimes and seen that he can be really good doing that. Maui feels really different, though, right? Like, the performance he does as Maui is not a typical Dwayne Johnson character, and I feel like he's still feels really like he's having fun here and engaged in a way that he doesn't always feel in some of his live action movies. This is a character that I think really, you know, brings him to life, even if we can't see him physically. I know we will see him in a year and a half when the live action version of Moana comes out and he's in it. But the animated version of Maui, hearing that voice come out of him and, you know, the fact that he can be so full of this bravado, but also have this winking tone Uh, It all works really well. There are some kind of uh, slightly meta jokes in this movie that are mostly given to Maui. And I think that Johnson does a really good job of selling so that it doesn't kind of uh, uh, send the film off the rails. This doesn't turn into Deadpool. Uh, It just it's a little more knowing than the first, especially in the wake of having a movie that has been as hugely successful and beloved as the first one is. It makes sense that you would acknowledge that at least a little bit, and I think they do that in a clever way here. So yeah, obviously there are a couple things that I wish were different, but overall I had a really good time with Moana 2. Uh, has someone who has watched the first one many times, not as many times as I know the kids who watch it on Disney Plus like constantly, so that it's always, always, always ranking amongst the top movies on streaming every week. Um, but I watch it a lot, and I think that, you know, this is a worthy successor as far as carrying the spirit of the first film and the character, even if quality-wise it's not quite up to what the first one uh, had. But the first one is, you know, a pretty high bar, so they can't all be Moana. But if they were all Moana too, we'd still be pretty happy, I think. I am Moana. See, it just feels good to sing.